everyone. Welcome to this week's video. Thank you for joining me. This week I wanted to talk about the importance of um, spending time on our own, spending time in stillness, spending time in silence. Um, we're raised um, thinking that it's when we have many people around us, it's when we have many friends, when we're invited everywhere that this is when you know we are worthy and that's when we're valuable and for me switching from that outward looking gaze to looking within wasn't an easy process either it it, it took me uh, getting to the point of utter inner depression and just not really belonging um, an inner sense of inner emptiness and and lack of fulfillment that finally was strong enough for me to start paying attention when I realized that I feel better when I'm alone than when I feel with other people because I just didn't know who I was anymore. It didn't feel well to be me anymore. So today, everything I write about, everything I teach, everything I, I speak about in my videos, in my sessions with clients as a coach, it's something that I learned when I started spending time with myself. It wasn't from books that I read. It wasn't from expensive courses or degrees that I signed up for. It wasn't anything that anyone taught me from the outside. Yes, of course, there were people, the right people who came with the right messages when I became receptive to them. But most of what I teach about today is that sense of reconnecting to our inner voice that is absolutely necessary for us to live the lives that we've come here to live. So spending time on our own, it's something that we're not used to doing. It feels as if there is something wrong with us when we want to, uh, to be without pe other people. Um, and yet it's one of the most important thing that we, things that we can do because this is where we get to reconnect with ourselves and stop using outside um, people or circumstances as a measurement of how we're doing. It's when we are left in stillness, in quiet with ourselves, do we start really um, understanding what our life feels like and whether we are in the right place for us and whether we are where we want to be. It's, it's scary in the beginning. It's because we, when we're used to being guided from outside, we are not attached. We, we have lost connection to that inner barometer, inner guidance. But slowly but sure and surely, um, when we commit to that, finding that inner guidance, finding that inner voice, we, we come to, to understand it and it becomes louder and louder. At first, our ego mind is louder, our conditioned responses, our habitual responses to life and people with it in it um, will seem louder and it'll be confusing. But the more time we spend with ourselves, we become a witness, an observer of our process. And that to me was one of the most important things. So what happened is as I started becoming of my own observe, of my own process, of my own thoughts, of my own re reactions, of my own triggers, I started understanding something about life that, that actually most of the choices I've made were not even mine. Most of the expectations I had about life were not even based in reality. It was a hodgepodge of things that I've read about, heard from others, uh, that were taught to me by my own parents, by the culture in which I was raised. It, it's none of it really was mine and it's when I started spending time with myself that slowly but surely I was able to um, tra trace where these um, expectations come from where these lessons about life's life come from and um, to start choosing my own um, truths and understanding what matters to me personally and how I want my life to feel and look like. 
Um, and it's really not, it's not easy, right? It's, it took me many years to, to understand that, but we think that it's only, you know, by reading certain books or getting certain degrees that we are, that we have the right to speak about our human experience. And this is not at all what's, what I learned in my, in my process, in my experience. Um, everything that I've experienced, everything that I've felt, I then found in books explanations to. But it wasn't from the books that I learned. And another thing that I can say is that when I dared to speak about my experience, I started writing about it in a truthful way outside of the professional jargon. I just tried to use simple words that were in my own vocabulary to explain the complicated and devastating feelings that I was feeling. And when I started daring to share that, this is when everything else started in my life. It's when I started sharing myself. It's when I started allowing myself to speak, to self-express, that other people started coming to me. And I became a coach almost in response to the people who were coming to me because of my writing, because it was so truthful. It was so simple. The language I, I used was simple. It was my own language. It wasn't because I was a psychologist or because I was a sociologist or because I was a scientist. I was just a regular person who started daring to speak about my experience because the more I shared my words, the more I shared myself, the more I realized that I'm onto something and that my experience as a human being actually is a lot like other people's experience. That we ultimately we all ask the same questions, we just don't all dare to speak about it publicly. So that permission that we can give ourselves to express to me was life-changing. It became an alchemical process where from a nobody I became me and the more I dared and, this, and still the more I dared to express what I feel, what I think, what I observe, the more daring what I speak is, the more people come to me. It could be privately, it could be, you know, not, not in, in a way that other people could see, but it's just been a tremendous experience for me that as soon as I started allowing myself to be myself in the way that seemed most natural to me, so for me it was through speaking and through writing, putting these experiences into words, trying to describe them in words, that other people started to come into my sphere and today I feel myself at the center of a huge community of people and I feel that I belong and I feel that my life has meaning and it has purpose because I dare to speak about our human experience. So what I want to say is that so many of us, so many people who come to me tell me that they feel unseen and un unheard in their relationships. And this was me many years ago. Today, I don't feel that anymore. Even if I speak to people who cannot always meet me where I would have preferred them to meet me, I am still in my own full self-expression. And that is self-love to me today, that the concept of self-love is quite confusing. And I think many of us, even when we use it, we really don't understand what that means. To me, self-love is understanding that we are valuable enough to express our innermost thoughts, to express who we are, to share ourselves generously with others without fear that we'll be shut down, without fear that we'll be uh, excluded. Because I am excluded from certain circles, even from certain family circles. I am excluded, but I understand that those people are just unable to receive me as I am, and that's okay. I've made peace with that. What is more important to me is that my life feels differently now that I speak my own truth, and that um, 
I give permission to other people to start expressing themselves truthfully. It feels absolutely incredible, that sense of freedom and that sense of connection that I know today as I express myself freely in so many different ways is absolutely what connection is all about. I feel connected to this life. I feel connected to my life in this world and I, I feel that there is a place for me here. I've joined the cosmic orchestra and I found my own instrument in it and this is what I wish for everyone to, to, to find. Find your instrument, find the way to express your voice in this life in which we all belong. So, just something that I wanted to share this weekend. Um, I hope it makes sense to you. I hope that those of you watching understand that sense of the need to express our truth, even if you're still in the stages of not giving yourself permission. But I, I'm here to reassure you that this is among the single most important things that we will ever do is to start sp spreading our truth, start expressing our inner voice. This is everything. This is why we're here. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week.